what is like one of the most unpopular opinions about uh, gym workouts for footballers? Popular one would be like lifting weights. So there's a fallacy that lifting weights will make you slow eye, it'll make you bulky, it'll make you it'll make you like that, you'll be too stiff, etc. That's that's a myth. That's a that's a big myth. Now, if you do it, oh, oh, oh do you do you do you believe so? Or, um so oh I like this. <laughs> okay, so you know, um when I kind of go like to the gym, I yeah. I kind of work more on cardio, so I do that, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, uh, rowing machines. Um, I'm on the cross cross trainer. I yeah, yeah. don't really necessarily do a lot of weight work. I would say in that scenario, you are, you're doing the right things, but then knowing how to train. So, for example, what people think is you go in the gym and you train like a bodybuilder, which is nothing wrong. I have maybe like one bodybuilding sesh a week. But in terms of like mm. training like an athlete, so if you look at the sprinters, they all look jacked. Mm. Um, and obviously over time, they've developed to look like that. But if you train in a certain way, so for example, I would train like power for like five reps, explosive. You're not going to build muscle that way. So let's yeah. say you get like 70% of your squat and you go five reps as powerful as you can. That's not going to build you. That's not going to make you jacked, but it's going to, um, it's going to make your muscles twitchy. It's going to, um, uh, what do you call it? Like spark your muscle, your fast twitch muscle fibers, and it will just train them. And the more you kind of train your fast twitch muscle fibers, the more reactive they are, the more, when it's goal time, bang, they know this movement. When it's time for you to jump, we've done this loads of time in the gym, bang. So it just happens automatically. So mm -hmm. the key to that is just knowing how to train. Do you try and replicate what happens on a football pitch in the gym with your training? It's a good question. So as much as possible, yes. But then over time, I've learned that you can't always, so a match is a match. It doesn't matter. You can't really replicate. You can't even really replicate in training like that because training is kind of, let's say, like routine. A match is a match. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but you can train and improve movements. So, for example, you, you run, improve your running, um, improve your running mechanics, your sprinting mechanics. You can practice and you can practice things like your strides, how you run, uh, making sure things like your glutes work, making sure you're stable here. So things like strengthening your ankles so that if you go to roll your ankle, they're robust. You've been training them. So you can't always replicate match movements, but you can you can train them to be more efficient. So, for example, if you're going up for a header, you can practice things like um would you call it vertical jumps and then you can practice things like a there's a vertical jump where you jump and someone pushes you and you try and um you try and counter that so that's kind of like you practicing you're going up for a head on shoulder to shoulder with someone so you just kind of replicate the movements as much as possible in the gym but you can't always play metrics um apologies mm. if i'm you know if i butchered like the name um how yeah. how Biometrics. important is is like having that that session um, for, you know, um, a footballer from like non-league, you know, to yeah. like professional and, you know, even at grassroots? Um, so I would actually recommend having at least like one plyometrics uh, session. I'd even ab advise anyone really, to be honest. Now, the aim of plyometrics is basically you put in as much force into the ground as possible. And it's going to project you. So, for example, plyometrics. So each time you run, running is kind of like, um, it's called ballistic plyometrics. So ballistics is something you do repetitively. Mm -hmm. So so imagine if you took a stride. So if you took it, if your stride normally can go from here to here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Plyometric kind of trains you to be able to go from here to here, from here to here. Okay. In less energy as possible. So basically being able to go from here to here to from here to here 
and then now that now that now is going to take you less energy and then now you're going to be able to even go from here to here even quicker if that makes sense yeah so it's basically yeah. training you to apply force into the floor as quick as possible i'm gonna <laughs> so let's see people say that i run like a t-rex um, <laughs> 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 Oh, no. oh so so all right so so actually so what's the one thing that i can do to to actually improve my my kind of running gait um to to literally improve my my like stride pattern so i would recommend speed so if you came to me we'll start with your speed mechanics so mechanics is obviously I always say to my clients, so elbow to knee, so opposite hand, opposite um, knee, etc. And then would probably go down to the ground, work on your arm swings, and then we'll go working with your arm swings with your leg. So we just go with some. It's called a skips. So a skips. We're just working one at a time, one at a time, and then we'll progressively get quicker. And then you could take it onto like a treadmill. So where you have to actually think about it. And the treadmill is going to be light. It's going to be easy. You just have to basically think about it, what you're doing, your elbows to your knees, um, the right posture, all of that. And over time, then you just keep doing that speed mechanics, use it on the treadmill speed mechanic. And then you can probably transition that into like maybe a little bit of outdoor stuff. Maybe you can practice in your warm up, And then over time, then you just ramp it up bit by bit according to how much progress you're making. But I would recommend to your speed mechanics, which is how you run. You, you like spoke about footwork and mm. um, in in a lot of your videos, mm. they are like really um, almost kind of, I'd say, um, focused on, on uh, literally your like feet, your heels, mm. your like tiptoes. I would I'll literally love to know three tips that anyone can actually do to improve their footwork. Their yeah, footwork. Um, so three tips I would give to someone trying to improve their footwork would be first of all, find drill like drills that are tailored to you, drills that you can do, because everybody has a level, um, regardless, um, that you can do that kind of slows down how you move and then progress it so i'll go through it with you so you know the video that you saw where uh, with the boy yeah so let's just say for example i put like two cones i might be like take step so take right foot left foot then bring it back so right right left uh right left right left right left right left so we just kind of practice go forward back forward back forward back forward and back and then I would advise actually record yourself and make sure each rep over time, each rep is identical. Like they, you're stepping in the right places, come back, step. So you can, it's self-analysis really. You can start with as simple as basic as that, going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and then practice left foot, right foot. Because what you will find is one of your feet will be better. One will be quicker. One will probably be stronger. One will probably have better balance. One will not have as much balance. So you just work on both. So I would say for someone who's trying to improve their footwork, you start with just the basics. Um, to start with forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, or you could go, then you could go side to side, side to side. Just basically create like a rhythm, because I play drums in church as well. So I work with rhythms to so create like a rhythm and then practice that and then over time add speed. So if you're trying to improve your footwork, the first thing you want to do is not necessarily think about speed. I think about efficiency. So I can probably do that forward, back, forward, back. I'll probably do like 100 reps without getting tired, but whereas someone might do 10 and get tired. But efficiency, so that's one. Find nice and simple, a nice and simple drill. You can find it anywhere, probably on my page, which you will find details soon. And then um, you want to work on your ankle elasticity. So how bouncy your ankle is so let's say this is your ankle a lot of us have really stiff ankles um so 
ankle elasticity just basically helps that bounce. So, and it keeps it strong as well. So work on strengthening and work on bounce. So an exercise, I just can't really do it now, but it's like, it's called a pogo. It's kind of like tiptoeing, tiptoeing. So bounce, working on bounce, bounce the ankle. So you're tiptoeing up. You can kind of do that with your T-Rex as well if you want. <laughs> this one you can. <laughs> so yeah, so it's called a pogo, P-O-G-O. Um, so you can do pogos. They help with uh, ankle elasticity. And then, um, yeah, that's what I have at the moment. So work on very simple, basic drill. You can start with just going forward. So put a line or maybe like a cone or a ladder to go Step, 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 step. Work with it, record it, check it, make sure each rep looks exactly the same and then progress it by adding speed and it will make it a bit more complex. And then ankle elasticity. It's so important um, when you're kind of talking and when you're breaking it down is to just work on one step. Like do um, do not think about running a marathon until you can Mm. walk. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, and and literally, what I'm kind of getting from from everything that you're saying is is just start with the simplest thing, the simplest thing, simplest thing, mm-hmm. and because it all adds up, is a chain. Because I think a lot of people will probably want to just go to just running fast. It doesn't work like that because if you don't have the right mechanics down here, you will break down up here. Mm-hmm. So start with here. So clean this up, then you can start adding speed, then you can start adding more power, et cetera. But what happens is, for example, it's just basically like, let's say you, you walk straight into the gym, it's ice cold outside, you go straight into the gym and you go straight to try, I don't know, deadlift a one rep max. Your chances of injury are so high compared to, if you start with a nice warm up, warm up, you know, you got the blood flowing, you've done your mobility, then your activation, then you progressively increase the weight to your max. You stand a better chance here than you do there. So that's kind of like the same mm-hmm. procedure. I would love to know who like you think in the professional game has a really good running mechanics and why. Ooh! <laughs> oh, he has a... To be fair, do you know what? They're all very well drilled, but who would I say? I like, um, do you know what? Alfonso Davis, he's he's fast. Kyle Walker. Mm-hmm. I would probably, oh, it's between those two. Not necessarily in terms of speed, but in terms of, I'll probably go, maybe go Kyle Walker. Mm-hmm. Like when he's at top speed, he's upright. His knee comes up, chest is up. And he's flying. Um, I think a lot of them have good mechanics, but you can always tell someone who really puts in work. And same with um, Alfonso Davis. At, um, is he still at Bayern? I think he's at Bayern. Bayern. I think he's, yeah, I think he's going to rail at the end of this season, isn't he? Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, when they're at top speed, they run upright. The strides, like, chest is up, knee comes up, and they powerful strides. I'd, I'd go for Walker. Just Walker's crazy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy still. Um, what about you? Was, do you, reckon? Um, do you but, so, um, I like the elegance of Kaka. Kaka, um, okay. Yeah, you know, there's he glides. A, yeah, like he glides, he and, glides. and 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 uh, you know, also, um, also I like Ferdinand as well. You know, um, I kind of like those players that let you know make it look quite effortless mm, when they mm, run. Mm, 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 mm. Um, because again, you know, it's you know, yes, it's kind of part of their genetics, but of course, you know, um, there's a they work on it, you know, they can work on it, and you know, again, exactly, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. it's the tiny yeah. details that she make everything just look mm. so effortless. So, yeah, you know, mm. it's kind of you know, like it's those type of players who I who I like watching, mm. and uh, I know it's these are retired players as well, given, yeah. given away your age, but <clears throat> <laughs> <that's okay. laughs> it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember how Kaka used to run. But I used to remember his goal. What, what goal was it? Was it against Barcelona or was it Liverpool? I he mean, just ran, 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 ran. You, you know, I think ran for AC United. Milan. No, you know, I think it was against United when he kind of sucker punched you guys when um 
when he made Ever and um, Gabriel like run like into each other. I yeah. can't remember that. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, obviously, I well, listen, obviously, you wouldn't remember, but it, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. You know what I mean? It's cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, Kaka was a powerful. I remember he used to just glide, man, mm. even with the ball at his feet, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, and then of course, like you know, if you're kind of looking at players now, even Jude Bellingham has that kind of elegance about him. But mm. of course, like he's mm. very powerful with his running. Mm. So, mm. um, so yeah, like it's not as graceful as lots of Kaka, but you know, there's yeah. a still uh, element of of like you know, I'm yeah. in absolute control of like my area and my what body. I'm doing. Yeah, mm. you need that, man. You need yeah. that. Yeah, you need that. So, um. Once you've finished playing football or once you've finished having an amazing session with yourself in the gym, um, what's the best way to recover? Um, the, I, do you know, the best way to recover is your sleep, man. Mm. Yeah, you sleep because that's mm. where all the damage and all of that gets repaired. So, for example, let's say <clears throat> if we sleep, if somebody sleeps like nine hours, compared to if somebody sleeps four hours, your body's only got four hours to, to let's say, rebuild a house, <laughs> rebuild Rome, or nine hours. Now, obviously, it's going to do better in nine hours. Um, so now my number one tip is your sleep. Uh, my number two tip would be your nutrition. Obviously, no one wants to hear this, but yeah, so... Immediately, let's say immediately after a session or after a game, I like to get um, like protein and carbs um, into my system, good protein and carbs, just to kind of kickstart that recovery process before I go to sleep. Um, so, yeah, so sleep, uh, getting the right nutrition on board, and then also having the right um, recovery process that works for you. So let's say after a session or whatever, I like to, cool down in terms of stretch etc all of that but in the mornings i like to do like a nice mobility i just finished it before we started this like half an hour or whatever mobility just moving moving the joints um getting the blood flowing etc so having a nice daily mobility routine as well so sleep nutrition and a good um recovery process like mobility work do you do any of those um so sleep uh let's say an average five hours um, mm. and literally that's kind of I would, I would say on a kind of you know weekly basis yeah, yeah. um the diet is getting better um mm. you know it's kind of not perfect yeah um and she, when you're kind of talking about stretching and movement you know um you know I, you know um I, again as as I'm getting older, I, I like mm. realize that I have to do certain things, you know. Start um, moving, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, just start moving. So, so yeah. I'll, you know, so I'm, so I'm just trying to do these things, not only just for the football side of it, but just for our lifestyle in general. Um, yeah, 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 you know yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, um, and I've kind of realized that, you know, um, when I kind of go to the gym, when I'm kind of doing exercise, it's not necessarily just for me performing the best I can possibly do on a football pitch mm. is literally what I can do in my general health as well. Life, yeah, 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 yeah. What makes great content on social media? Being yourself, so being free, um, being authentic, so being authentic, be, be yourself, post what you find valuable because there are people out there who find it valuable and be real, man. Um, but then also be insightful. So be, be very insightful because there are people who are out there seeking knowledge, etc. cetera. Um, be educational. So be able to, like, people will learn from you. Um, how you do that is down to you and your, like, authentic, authenticity. So, yeah, so that's down to you. And then... I like the being lighthearted approach. So being lighthearted, um, being charismatic, and just let your personality come through. And through that, educate people, enlighten people, um, and 
entertain people, kind of all of, all of that in a nutshell. Um, that's what I would say would make a great social media. If anyone was looking to give up playing football, mm. if someone was petrified about going to the gym, mm. um, what would be your advice uh, to those people? So to the person looking to give up, my advice would be give up. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I was looking, I just wanted to see your reaction. But I'm joking. No, no, no. So my advice would be, do you know what? Like you go, you, you want to go back to the roots in terms of why do you do it? Like why are you? There are even some, even for me, sometimes like when we're training in the winter, like the times where it's snowing and we're still training, I'm like. Oh, this is why am I here kind of thing. Do you get what I mean? So I would say you want to go back to why why exactly you're doing it. Um, if you can connect to why you do it, um, if it's for fun, if you're trying to progress, if you're trying if you're trying to progress and stuff, you got to stick it out because these are just these are parts of the process that will get you to where you want to go to. So you always have to connect with why you're doing it. If you don't know why you're doing it. I'd say go back and find why you're doing it. Because if it, a lot of people don't know why they do certain things, it's easy to quit. Um, for example, if you're training for a marathon, which is, what, 26 days away, and you got to run and it's raining and raining and raining, you know you need to stick it out because you're training for a marathon. Do you know what I mean? Um, so you always have a reason why you want to do it. Uh, but I would say um, try and find a way of enjoying it Find something that makes you enjoy it. So one of the things that helps me enjoy football is because the way that I train, I can translate into football and I can see how I'm getting better as an athlete. Let's say if somebody does give up, um, you will then realise that you will know if you made the right choice or not. Um, but obviously, if you know the reason why you're doing it, it will be much easier to stick with it. You like mentioned pain. Mm. And again, I'm going to relate this. I'm going to let, literally kind of seg segue this. And again, we are actually recording this at a time yeah, where yeah. Francis, you you uh you went onto your socials and and you was very upset that you got sent off for your you know your first ever mm. red card. That's pain. That's pain. Uh I would love to know your biggest takeaway from your red card? After like games and stuff, I always go back and reflect on performance, etc. You know, my mood, my emotions, my attitude, this, that, all of that stuff. What could I have done better? So after, so in that scenario, I'm speaking to a referee now, by the way, which is you. <laughs> um, I would say that I definitely could have handled the situation better. So basically I got two yellows for basically like repetitive fouls and I just kept getting on onto the referee's case I just kept it because I felt like he wasn't making the right decisions and I kind of felt like he was doing it on purpose so in that in that scenario I would go back and just make sure that emotionally because obviously the, it's a game of emotions um I made sure that I keep my emotions in check that I never let my um let's say frustration get out of hand so always have a lid always have something in the game that's just gonna just get me to refocus um so yeah so i think the takeaway is to for me personally to handle that emotional level just i thought i was getting better but yeah i'm a bit of a hothead on the pitch mm. um so yeah so so yeah it's just to calm down mm. definitely and the referee sport though but yeah go on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know i mean um it's a kind of very interesting point. I mean, um, in in retrospect, do you think as a kind of collective, so so collectively, I'm not talking about you individually, but do you think uh, collectively as a team, the uh, officials did a good job um, in officiating that game? Mm, nah. Nah. Like, I won't. 
shy away from, let's say, our lack of discipline because there were six reds uh, for context, right? I won't shy away from our lack of discipline, but he he kind of just let everything get to him as well emotionally. Obviously, he's he's also human. And then it just got to a point where no one could say anything, where you just come and ask him, like, oh, how long have we got left? He's like, no, I've told you, don't come and talk to me. Da, 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 da. And you come and ask him, oh, how, oh, how was that foul or whatever? I've already told you, don't come and talk to me. Bang, is a yellow card or oh, bang, sin bin. Um, so, so you know, I don't think they did. But again, they're also human, just in the same way that I've reflected that I could have handled it better. Um, it's the same for them. How can people get in contact with you? You can reach me on my Instagram, FR Performance, FR Performance with two E's at the end, but you'll be able to um, see that. Um, on my TikTok is also FR Performance. Um, I mean, my email and my contact details are on that page, but the best way is through my Instagram or through my TikTok. Um, so yeah, so if you go on my Instagram, check, check out my page. Um, help yourselves. Um, yeah, man. Drop me a follow. Drop me a message. This and that. I like to keep my page interactive as well. And so, yeah, man. So that would be the best way. And then for like things like training, inquiries, coaching, etc. Just on my page, you'll be able to reach me. So, yeah. So, yeah, Amazing. man. Amazing. And everything will be in the description below. Francis, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and my again, friend. Thank you. Honestly, thank you so much for hosting me. I've had a great time. And I hope um, this has been insightful for, for you. And I've also learned as well through this. Um, and thank you for your support as well, man. Honestly, it means a lot, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Please, guys, like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next week.